Uh, yes, Father, in Jesus' name. Sister Michelle, blessings unto you, Sister Lori. Blessings unto you. How's Troy doing? How's our brother doing? Michael J., blessings to you. Anna Marie, blessings unto you. Nicholas, blessings unto you. Tashana, blessings to you. Jay Gray, P. Nicole, C. Isaman, Janine, blessings unto you. Sister P.A., how you doing, sis? Sister Linda, blessings to you. David Brown, blessings unto you. It should be chasing you, family. It should be chasing you, daylight. Brittany Smith, blessings to you. Blessings to everybody. Listen, I have a word, something that the Lord was stirring in my spirit. Very, very important. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. You know, um, every word of truth has the opportunity to change. Change your circumstances, change your situation, change everything. And that's what we want. We want, we want that word. We need that word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. To set us straight, to set us right. To set us on a path, we you you be you you would be people would are would be find out the degree of the the degrees of separation between uh um uh uh, uh uh the path and 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 error or the blessing and 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 falling and 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 missing it right um and the degree of separation happens for for the most part in here. How we think, how we perceive, what we see, how what, what 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 we believe, what we think, right? Right? And so the word has to come. God has to give us this word to 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 uh reshape us and remake us after the ways of the kingdom of God, right? He has to he has to bring us understanding, he has to give us wisdom, right? He has to uh uh and it has to be something that you know to seek out wisdom. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you. To seek out wisdom, the Holy Spirit said, to seek out wisdom is to first realize that your perception is inadequate. Humble people seek out wisdom and they get it from God. Mm. Because a humble person can look at their situation and say, hold on, you know what? <laughs> I don't make good decisions. Yep. I, I, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for I'm responsible for the choices that I made. Lord, look at the look at all the decisions that I made. Look at all the decisions that I made, Lord. I can't trust myself. And that and, and that shines so bright in the kingdom of God. It shows such humility that God says, listen, I will give unto you and I will not upbraid you for your desire, for your petitioning. But it's the, those who it, but the, the people who find trouble are the people that you got to like you got to fight to get the truth to because they already like, hold on. I think I got it. I think I know. Right. And they prioritize how they feel and what they think. And so as a result, as a result, they get more, they get more results from what they believe and what they think. Then watch this, then, then wisdom, because wisdom, the Bible says in Proverbs three, wisdom will provide in your house. Proverbs three, Proverbs four, Proverbs five. It talks about the wisdom and the, and the, and the, and the blessing and the importance of wisdom, but also the supply of wisdom. Wisdom will get it to you. But God and God contends. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to tell somebody God contends with you. Some people don't even realize that God has been fighting them. God will, has been contending with them because God has been steadily trying to get that understanding that who well, no, right? You know, and 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 it, and it's and it's and it's a, and it's a and it's a fight because you know when we're not receptive to the truth that God is sending, guess what? We fighting. You just told the Lord to put up your dukes. And so sometimes the Lord will send it again, send it again. And then, and then if that don't, if that don't work, then guess what God will do? He will allow your perception to bring its reward. He will allow your perception to come to fruition so that you, so that your, your, your own wisdom, your own perception could come to its natural conclusion and you can see, and then you can weigh it out versus you can weigh it out against what God said to do versus what you thought should be done, how you felt about it. And then when you get the outcome, right, then what happens? Some people still don't, some people still, right, even when they get the outcome, some people still be like, oh, well, right? They, they find a way to blame God anyway, because God, you should have just changed it. You shouldn't have just let it happen. 
He's like, hold on. I'm trying to get you that. I'm trying to give unto you and to contend with you, to impart unto you that which pertains to life, to, 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 to impart and to equip you with that which leads to life. Come on, somebody. Hmm. But we find ourselves contending with the Lord. And, and, and so when we are humble, we say, okay, Lord, you know, just, just being able to make an honest observation. Like, you know what? I'd be wrong a lot. You know, look at my own thoughts. Look at my own beliefs. Look at the choice I made here. I thought it was the right decision, but I thought it was the right decision based upon how I felt and how I thought I was going to get them back, how I thought I was going to pay them back, how I thought I was going to make them hurt, how I thought I was going to do this and that, how I thought, right, you know, it, it was right. But God had another counsel against what you, against your action. God said, no, I want you to bless them. No, God said, no, I want you to forgive them. God said, no, I want you to love them. God, he said, I got a different counsel. Come on, somebody. Is that not the truth? And as long as you don't want to change, mm, you're not making any way. I don't know who this is for, right? But as long as you don't, as long as you, as long as you're in a position where you feel like you don't, you, 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 you are unwilling to change, then you are making no space for wisdom. And God in his love will do two things. He will, he will address it again. He will try to address it again. And then at some point he will say, okay, look, let me show you where that goes. So that you can, so it can come to the conclusion so that you can see for yourself if it benefits or if it profits. And the fact that you may be hurt and the fact, can I just say this? The fact that you may be hurt when it comes to its conclusion really is not the end of the end of the story. It's not a, it's not even really, it's, it's going to be, it'll seem like a huge deal. It'll be right. It'll seem traumatic. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, what you're dealing with is, is just the, the clarity he's bringing clarity the same way. If I follow after the Lord, then guess what? If I follow the Lord, then it's going to come to a point of clarity. It's going to come to a point where I say, hold on, Lord, following you brought me into this blessing, doing it your way. Lord brought me into this, uh, experience expansive place doing you do, following you lord led me into the green pasture not following you lord led me into a place that was barren right does that make sense right and so it's really just for a point of clarity not for right it that's really what it's about and and uh um that's kind of what those moments testify of. it's like okay lord you know what i was wrong yeah, that was not the right way to do it. That, you know what? I see now, right? And we all have those moments and those become those become points of glory for you and God. Those become points of glory because that's where God says, okay, now, are, now will you be receptive? Now will you be receptive to wisdom? Now will you be receptive to my instructions? Come on, somebody. Isn't it, isn't it amazing how when God speaks to us, it, they, it sometimes it seems grievous. It seems hard, right? It seems hard, but it tends to life. But then our ways seem more palatable. They seem more pleasant, but they lead to destruction. Have you ever noticed that? How the outcomes, when we did it our way, it was like, hold on, this is a better option, Lord, that for me to never forgive them, for me to be angry, for me to be doing all this stuff, for me to be like, you know what you're going to get, right? You know, it seemed like a better option for me to take it into my own hands, for me to, right? It seemed like a better, better option at the time, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right? It seemed like a better option at the time. So it was more palatable and more pleasant. But the end of that... Oh boy, the end of that shook the foundations. All types of beams and everything that I was building start to shake. But with God, the, with, with, with the Lord, it seems more difficult at, 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 uh, 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 up front. Oh, okay, Lord. Oh, man. So you want me to be humble? You don't want me to go off? <laughs> right? Right, is is we right? One sister, right here. I don't know if she's listening. I don't know if she's on tonight, but I see her in the spirit. Right, where? Well, you don't want me to go off, Lord. Well, how that? Well, I, you know what? I can't do that. I can't just let them get away with this. And I don't, you know, right? She's got that, that thing, right? But then, right? It seems more difficult. But the end is something. The end. The outcomes. Never leaves a rejoicing. 
and she very and she very rarely makes the correlation between you know choosing the 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 path to take and the outcomes that she's receiving the outcomes and 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 that she's receiving now look i just wanted to say that because um it was just something that the, the Lord brought up, but I want to say this because this is actually an amazing message. So for those of you, I had to address that. I had to address that very important, but this is what the Lord said. He said, it should be chasing you. I was watching a, uh, 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 um, uh, fixer up. Anybody familiar with that show fixer up? I was watching that show. I was watching some of their older episodes and I was like, you know, and, and I remember, um, um, that, that they were, um, couple that would always, uh, give glory to God. You know, I thought that was amazing. And I, and I was watching their show today. Right. I was just kind of binging it. Right. <laughs> and I was like, man, they do some work. And I, and I, and, and it was something that dawned on me. I was like, you know, there's always a difference between people who want to do something, people who can do something and people who were called to do something. Do you ever notice how the, the anointing, hits different you ever notice how the anointing that oil that that purpose to do something you ever notice how that uh it, it just always seems to make it right it always seems you know my wife was saying baby have you ever seen them do a, like a bad bad job i was like you know what no not like i've seen some other people they always seem to get it they always seem to be in spirit in in spirit in their assignment right because the oil makes the difference it's a difference between wanting to do something you know uh wishing to do something and being gifted to do a certain thing you can always tell the difference right and so i was just i was like man lord you're awesome and i just began to just you know as i was watching uh um um Somebody that they did a house for, you know, the guy just broke down and was just like, man, you know, he was just thanking the Lord. And, you know, I was like, man, Lord, you're so awesome, you know, glorifying yourself on this stage, you know. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. I, shift, 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 shift. People. Oh. Some of you have underestimated God so greatly. You know, it's interesting how people look at this world and see the evil mm. and they think to themselves, what could God have? How, what, what could God, what could God, how could God have anything to do with this evil world? Yep. What, how could God have anything to do with this evil world? Where does the God fit in? And so they cancel every place, every platform, every assignment, every high place that God would lead them to that God watches because the because the agenda of God still it must it still is always to be glorified. And 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 and. As I was watching, I felt myself being affected because, you know, you know, you know, we're believers. So I was like, that's beautiful. And I saw the Lord. I was like, Lord, you're amazing. And it caused me just to worship. And they didn't, they didn't have to, they didn't, they didn't break out into song or anything like that. It was just, a, it was just a genuine effect of having these, these believers, watch this, who, who did not deny the glory of God, but allow God to use them in a place, watch this, where, where, where these super Christians say, guess what? God can't go. But I, I, I sat in the background being affected by the glory that was released. And guess what? I automatically went into worship. I saw how good God was. And it caused me to thank him. It caused me to acknowledge him. It caused me to rejoice. It caused, you see, you see what I'm saying? People have this narrow minded perspective of God. And as a result everything is twisted everything is twisted can i just say this thank you holy spirit everything is twisted in the mind of man make no mistake about it everything is twisted in the mind of men but i sat there and i watched and i was like wow lord you're so amazing it brought it, it drew it drew it drew the worship out i saw god's hand and I begin to acknowledge it. Lord, you're so amazing. Lord, you're so good. Two things. 
I want to get back on point. But I just want to say this to somebody listening right now. This word is about to find somebody. I'm going to say it this way. This word is about to find somebody. This word is going to find somebody where God says this. I have called you to a high place. Thank you, Father, in Jesus name. He said, I've called you to a high place. He said, if only you can get over the fact, the fact of whether or not you deserve it. He said, I've called you to a high place so that I may be glorified through your life. If only you can get over yourself. If you could step out, if you will step out of the, if you will step out of the, the, the confines of of, of, of the narrow mindedness of man and, and man's perception and seek me to see what is in me. You don't need to bring any speculation with God. You don't need any bring. You don't need to bring any limiting speculations with God. You don't need to bring any foregone conclusions in terms of what God wants to do through you or for you. We keep it narrow. We keep it narrow within the scope of the word of God. But when God starts talking about you, guess what? Sometimes it will defy you, ass all. I'm not worthy of the call of the apostleship. I'm the least of the least, yet by the grace of God. Why? Because the word of God that is narrow got real expansive when it came down to Paul and Paul's calling. Come on, somebody. Peter was a fisherman. And the path in the word of God is very narrow and straight, but then it gets real expansive when it comes down to God's purpose for you. What? Get away from me, Jesus. I'm a sinner. He said, nah, this grace just opened you up. This grace done got real expansive. Uh-huh. This grace done got real. You see, because now, 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 now your logic is being challenged. Now your logic is being challenged to follow God, to hear God. Now your logic, Lord, why would you use me to go here to do this, to be this, to be? Why would, why would you use me? Call me. Uh, 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 why, Lord? And the Lord says this to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Watch this ring in your spirit. The Lord says, will I not be glorified? Will I not be glorified? Shall the Lord of Lords not be, will I not be glorified? Uh-oh, oh boy. And, 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 and what we have to realize is, is that everybody plays a part. You know, there are some, you know, we, we all have a, 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 an anointing, a, a calling and every, and, 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 and truly everybody, it's easier to believe that everybody should be doing what you're called to do. I pray always that God make me sensitive to see what he's calling people to do that, that I don't pigeonhole people to, I don't, that I don't overlook God's agenda, God's assignment so that people could follow, watch this so that, so I can try to mold people after my image and have them and try to draw them in after me towards my assignment. That's why, that's why, that's why, uh, 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 uh what you will see is I don't always speak specifically, uh, uh, to things uh, um, in terms of your own life, what I say is I come to charge up what, what, what God has spoken to you. Come on, somebody. Oh boy. Oh boy. Right. And then how we should follow after in faith, how we should trust in God, how God is reliable. I magnify the King and charge what and charge what God has already spoken to you. Sometimes people want you to be them. You see, but I'm, but, but, but I'm aware of the fact that hold on. Why do we forget this in the body? You got different members and different members have different function. And so you got those who have been gifted for the evangelism, right? And so they say, why are you preaching? Oh boy, you should go evangelize. You should go evangelize. Right? I said, why don't I say, I said, look, 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 why don't I be led? So, cause you, cause if you, if you are, and, and thank you, Holy Spirit, I'm going to just say this, you know, there's some people who try to ignore their call. And so they try to put their call on you. Don't try to put your call on me because you running from it. If you hear the call of the evangelism, then go evangelize because I'm, I'm performing the call that I heard. Uh Oh, don't try to put on me what you running from. Come on, Jonah. Don't try to put your baggage on me. If God has yoked you into the call of the evangelism, then you go evangelize. 
Come on, somebody. Just because you running from it, right? <laughs> right, then we both be out of compliance because Lord's like, hold on. Why aren't you doing what I called you to do? Well, you know what, Lord? They start trying to, you know, they tell me I should be doing what they said. He said, hold on. <laughs> you got one master. You got one Lord. Because at the end of the day, no mistake can be made is that when you are operating in the oil, operating in the gift, operating in the call, guess what? Then God is glorified. Oh boy. But you notice how the challenges, the minds of men bring challenges to everything, even the things of God. Don't think that just because your mind can just be, don't think that just because your mind can formulate a matter that watch this, that that matter is from God. They formulated a matter against Christ and they said what? Oh, he's sinning. But God wasn't on their side. Just because your mind can form a conclusion, don't think that God is, oh, come on, somebody. Don't think that God supports it. And, and this is where I wanted to say this is where some people have gone astray and they don't even realize it. They've allowed that they've, they've, they've gone by the way because their mind has formulated a conclusion. Oh boy. And this is why I always tell people, I always try to warn people. I said, you know what? Even, even when something is in the very, uh, uh, the germinating stage in my, in my mindset and I begin to contemplate something and I think of something, right? The first thing I go is I, I, I put that light on it. Lord, what, what is this? Is there any validity to this? Lord, do you sign off on this? That's why, that's why you don't hear that's why that's why there's a lot of there's a the reason why a lot of things the a reason why I don't touch on a lot of things but when I but when the Holy Spirit stir me then you guys know I already know I'm come come and I'm going what and I'm gonna breathe that fire the Holy Ghost I'm gonna burn it down if there's a lie somewhere I'm gonna come get it mm. Right. But I wanted to say this because this is really, I believe this is going to be so transformative for somebody. Amen. But I was watching this show. I was watching the show and um, I saw something in the spirit. I saw something in the spirit. I was like, wow, Lord, you are good. Right. And I began to worship God. And they didn't even have to tell me to. But I saw God's hand on them. And I was like, wow, Lord, you're amazing. And I began to just worship the Lord. I said, like, Lord, you're awesome. You're good. And then the Lord said this to me. Deep in my spirit. He said, my people are chasing the blessing. And that's not right. I said, well, I, be, I found myself being disturbed. Uh-oh. Come on, somebody. Open your Bibles up to Deuteronomy 28. I saw it and I was like, wow, 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 Lord. Yeah. And he said, no, that's not right. And I believe that by the time we're done with this live, God is going to break that off of somebody that striving for the blessing that, 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 that pursuit of the blessing, that, that chasing of the blessing. I believe the Lord is going to break that off of you right now in Jesus name. I believe in the Lord is going to release you from that mindset and turn you right side, right side up because we've been upside down and something has happened in the church where you see, because I'm going to tell you something, help me. Holy ghost, help me. Holy ghost. How you're showing it to me church. If you don't, you got to hear me and my, you, you have to stop what you're doing. Do not be sidetracked. Hear what I'm saying. The things that happen to the church happen over time and they come and it, and it begins to change by one perception after another, one perception, one, 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 uh, 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 one, um, one, uh, uh, faulty perception of man's conclusion and man's thought. And, and before you know it, we are living out the outcomes of their misunderstanding. And I don't, and I, and I don't mean, and I'm going to say of their perversion. Do you know who will suffer the consequence 
of the 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 um the perception of man you and i will our lives will begin to, our lives will begin to testify of the perceptions that we drew from that that we drew from these from from uh 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 uh, uh from these people right and I'm not talking about the, the 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 absolute pillars or the the good men and women of God. I'm talking about the wolves where the wolves crept in, right? Where the where the theologians crept in, where where those who where those who had more more degrees than Holy Spirit, those who had more more uh well, it's my belief. Uh oh, they were those who right uh those who had more of uh well my perspective than Holy Spirit than Holy Spirit revelation. Mm. Now we exist in a place, watch this, we exist in a place, what will happen is eventually we will be in a building where there is less and less of God. Oh boy. But how many of you know that it was the will of Christ, that it was the will of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that there would be more? He said, what I've done was just the beginning. There is going to be a widening. There is going to be, a, there's, there's supposed to be an increase. There's supposed to be a build, building upon what I did. What I did, what I did was lay the foundation of what will be expanded upon. There will be more, not less. Not less. But with every perception of man, with every perception of man that's being taught, we come away with we come away with 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 with, with uh, 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 a a littler, uh, a smaller and a smaller piece of God. Uh oh, to the point where our lives, our lives will will regardless of what we think and how much right, our lives will will have no choice but to bear witness or bear fruit to the amount of God that we have in our life. Aren't you tired of having a little bit of God in your life? To the point where I just want to tell somebody, to the point there's somebody here listening, to the point where you're wondering, hold on, uh, uh, did I misunderstand? Why is the text not cor correlating with my life? Why does it seem that I got a little bit of God in my life, but yet when I read the text, he showed up like a big God. Come on, in the text, he's big, but in my life, he's small. Why do I got such a little bit of God in my life? Mm, come on. We become the offspring. We become the residual effect of, of, of small God teaching, big intellect where people, where people, where people, where people are now fascinated by, uh, uh, where people are fascinated by intellect. And so you leave out of there, you leave out of there being more enamored by the intellect of man but the cost has been a whole lot of God. Now you wonder why you can't get more God. You don't, you don't know how to get more God in your life and you're praying for more God in your life. But the problem is you have not been taught or counseled on the more God. And so you need more God in your life, but you don't know how to access him because you can't see him. You have been reduced in your understanding. And based upon what you understand is what you will go and transact with. Meaning this. If I have. If I have a belief, right, if I, if I, if I have, a, let's just say God has an account for me. God has, right, we, we live with two accounts. One is the flesh, one is the spirit. We live with two accounts, right? And the only count I'm aware of is one and it got like, you know, you know, uh, $50. I'm going to go and make transactions based upon what I have in account. Come on, somebody. Even though I may have a, even though, even though in my spiritual bank, I may have a hundred thousand, right? I may have 500,000, but, and then, and then when I need, right, I can be sitting here needing a $500,000 transaction, needing a hundred thousand dollar transaction. But guess what? Because I only have the perception of a $50 God, I will only make $50 transactions. Come on, somebody. Oh, God ain't good. He don't do this. The right, the Greek says this, the Hebrew said that, right? And it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, chief. Hold on. Hold on. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you saying? Are you tired of making $50 transactions when God has blessed you in himself in Christ? He's given you everything. 
it's time for you to switch accounts. It's time for you to start doing kingdom business. Well, watch this with the kingdom financier. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, but, but see, but what the problem is, is that you cannot help it. Even if you don't want to, you will not be able to help the fact that you will always transact with God based upon the knowledge that you have, the, the, the knowledge that you have acquired. People who get more understanding, they do bigger transactions, period. People who people who hang around people who who hang around people who say God is not like this. God is not like that. They will sit there and need. And, and you know what's crazy? Can I just say this? It doesn't stop. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know what the Lord just said this? And this is going to be a bear witness. To this. I don't know who this is for, but I just want to say this. This is what I saw in my spirit. Heard in my spirit. I saw you still heard you still. Being stirred for more. Oh boy, help me say that. See, even if you're transacting on a $50 level, in your spirit, your spirit is still calling for a greater transaction because that's what the whole, oh, come on somebody. The Holy Spirit wants to transact. It wants to transact on the level that uh, on the level of its capacity. So you will still feel stirred. And that's where somebody has been feeling frustrated because you have been, you have been uh, erroneously conditioned and uh, uh, to transact on a, on a $50 level, but yet the stirring still, the stirrings you can't, you can't help but to, to, to you can't help but uh, 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 to get those stirrings by the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is not trying to transact on those levels. It's trying to transact on a greater level. Jesus said this. <laughs> it was like Jesus. The Pharisees was like, Jesus, why don't you transact on our level and quit and quit causing all this not all this all, all this uh, 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 commotion, man. You know, what are you doing? Jesus, why don't you settle down and transact on our level? You know, we got the $50, $75. We got these $100 transactions. Jesus said, I must do the will of him that sent me. He said, I must transact on a greater level. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> he said, listen, I must transact on a greater level. There is a stirring on the inside of me to transact on a greater level. Why? Because when I transact on a greater level, watch this, God is glorified. And now you know, watch this, now you know that God was among you because I transact on a greater level. Come on, somebody. Oh, this is so good. This is too good. This is too good not to like. It's too good not to share. It's too good not to subscribe. It's too good. That's why you've been getting that story because God wants to. Just, um, let me let me speak to you real quick. God God has been desiring. You've been hearing the voice of God telling you, "I want to transact on a greater level." Why? Because I want to tell the world that I have been here through you. But you've been to around too many Pharisees who worship their own mind. And listen, the, uh, the, 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 the perception of man is always problematic. Even those, watch this, even those who, even those who occupy the house of God. God, God, want, God wants to transact on a level, watch this, that will, watch this, that will cause him to be glorified. Jesus said, I must do the will of him who sent me. And that's why, that's why there's a few people who've been frustrated. You've been like, okay, Lord, I, I you know what? I'm going to just listen. Because of this, they say this, people saying this, people, I don't know who to believe. You know what? I'm just going, I'm just going to transact on a $50 level. And you're like, okay, no problem. But then you find that it don't, God is, right? It don't stop the Lord from wanting to transact the way he want to transact. So now you're in conflict. That's why you're frustrated because now you still feel drawn to transact, transact on a greater level, but you don't, you confuse. Who is that? I don't know who wants me to transact on a higher level. Is that God? Is that the devil? The devil crafty. He wants me to, right? He want God to be glorified. He want God to be glorified. He want, right? He want to show that he's greater. He want to show that he's good. And I'm trying to show that I'm so humble. Is it about you or is it about God? Humility is being able to say yes to God. I want to show that I'm humble, Jesus, that I don't need nothing, Jesus. I will just stop. I will just be hungry, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I'm so humble, Jesus. He said, that's about you. He said, what about me? And I'm going to tell you guys something. Even now, 
Even now, God has got his eyes open for a 12. God has got his eyes open for a 12 who will allow him to cause some commotion, who will allow, who will allow him to move in such a way that watches that, 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 that the, that the Pharisees, because the, the oh boy, that the Pharisees will be like, hold on. Is that Jesus? The, right. The Lord gave him a whole, the Lord gave him a whole network. He gave him a whole, he said, listen, because, because, oh boy, because you guys are willing, I, how about I give you a network? Oh boy, Magnolia Network. <laughs> Oh, anyway, but here's this. Look, watch this. I'm, what I'm saying is, is we don't want to limit God. What I'm saying is we don't want to limit God. We don't want to limit God. We don't want to limit God. Let God be glorified. Let God be glorified. Now watch this. So he said, we're not supposed to be chasing a blessing, but the blessing is supposed to be chasing us. He said, it's not right. And then he began to show me something that really broke my heart. Now, uh, it made me sad a little bit because I began to see how, um, and I was sad for a second as I, as I was seeing it, right? And then he turned around, but I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna just walk you down there. I'm gonna just walk you down the, the path that we was on. I began to see how um, many of us come from places, broken places, broken places where uh, uh, we learn to make decisions that, that that are not in our best interest. That 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 where we where we learn to make decisions that we think protect ourselves, that cause us to, you know, take on a certain identity, certain persona, right? Where we where we learn to make broken decisions. Hmm. Amen. We come from a place, a broken place, and we make broken decisions. I'll say it that way. We come from a broken place. Let me know if you guys can hear me. We come from a broken place, right? We come from a broken place, if you can hear me. And we just learn to make a broken decision as a result, right? Decisions that are not in our best interest long term, right? And we don't know that. We don't know that. Because so much of coming from a broken place is trying to figure out how to deal with now, how to exist now, how to survive right now, right? How to survive right now. How do I make it? Uh, uh, and, 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 and we and we and we and we we adopt this mindset of short term goals. Can I make it to the end of the week? Can I make it to the end of the month? Right. You know, uh, who 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 can I keep? How I got to keep this person off me? How am I going to keep them off of me? And then and then and then if we have a little bit more space, then we may dream. It would be nice to be this when I grow up it would be nice to be like this right it would be nice to be like this when i grow up it would be nice to be like that when i grow up but then we got people who will immediately come and say you don't have the right you don't so we learn we learn we learn that we cannot from the earliest ages and sometimes you can't be that you don't got what it takes you will never you can't arrive there we learn that it's impossible at an early age we are we are we are marked with these untruths that work against the knowledge of God that work against the blessing of God that work against the purposes of God in our life and that's why sometimes it's hard to discover God's purpose watch this when we've already been marked against it Somebody's, uh, I don't know if he's a parent. Um, uh, and I, this is what I see. I see a kid uh, dreaming out loud in bad company. I see a kid, and I don't know who this is. What was when you were you, you were dreaming out loud in 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 bad company, and what I mean by that, you had the audacity to dream out loud, and dreaming out loud means to say what you wanted to be, and then people's like, "Who do you think you are? Oh, you think you're gonna be something?" Mm. You had the audacity of dreaming out loud in bad company. Uh oh. And listen, the reason why it's important not to, uh, I will say what I want to say. <laughs> it's not always wise to tell people 
where you're going, what you're doing. Unless you're strong enough, unless you're strong enough to withstand their objection to it. Uh oh. But if they, if you care at all about what they say, you got listen. You gotta, you gotta dream in quiet places until you get, until you become more integrated with what you're, with, with what you're dreaming. You until you become more integrated with that word that God has deposited on the inside of you. But you gotta be careful not to reveal the seed. Watch this in bad company. If you're not strong enough to maintain its growth or to maintain your, to maintain your connection to it, right? When people start coming after it, because they will, right? And so, and so, um, the Lord said to me, and I saw how, um, we, we're, we're so broken. And so we're dis so, so disconnected from, uh, traits that work in our best interest. Right. And, and it's like, and, and as I was talking to the Lord about that, I was like, man, I started to feel like kind of, I felt bad. And, it, and, 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 it, and, it, um, I almost was getting to a place. I was like, man, then what hope is there for us? Lord, <laughs> as, I was, as I was talking to, as I was talking to the Lord, I was like, and yeah, we come, we come so broken, you know, and we don't all come from places that have uh, uh, um, uh, great structures that 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 facilitate a mindset that 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 encourages us to go forward, that encourages us to go forward, that encourages us to tap into God that watches for some people that let us know it's all right to be blessed. Wow. That's a word. That is a major word. Oh, see, some people don't understand. Some people have no idea, but there are some people listening right now. You didn't even know it was all right to be blessed. Wow. We didn't even have the structure in place, right? We didn't even have the structure in place to where we could be, where we could be uh, 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 raised or reared in a way that, that we could even think that it was okay. Because when you, when you realize the, that, that it's okay to be blessed, you don't bring conflict. You don't bring, you don't even bring conflict. You don't even bring conflict to the table that God prepares for you. Mm. But when you don't think, when you're not sure if it's all right for you to be blessed. Uh oh. Sometimes we invite the devil, right? That wants to steal the food off the table that God prepares for us. Oh boy. Oh. And this is what's happened in the church. This narrow minded, this, this, not only want to say narrow minded because it's the wrong word, but just the perception of men. When, when, when the height, when the, when the, when the height of your counsel is the perception of men, you going to leave anemic somewhere. Something's going to happen. It's going to be a consequence. When you leave a place and you know more about uh, 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 the man and, and, and less about God, something's, something's, something's wrong. When you're more fascinated with his intellect, right, than the revelation of Christ and the, and the knowledge and the, and the counsel of God that was brought forth, right? Right. And, and, and that's the thing, like, and look at like that Xavier Roker, let's touch on that real quick. Cause I want to get into this word. He said, somebody told him you cannot be a, a Christian and rich. And I told him I'm rich in him. And if he said it, uh, it will be look at this, right? Look at this broken perception. Number one, the Bible talks about the end times where there are some people who are going to say, you know what, uh, that being rich is godly. It's godliness, excuse me, right? Which is crazy. But they used to do this, right? The Catholics used to do this. They, they, they said that because they had a lot of money, right, that they were approved by God based upon their wealth. And they would also sell uh, uh, these little gold bars to people. And these were people's uh, um, interests into heaven. This is how people would, they would sell tickets to heaven. Right. And, and, and so there was this, this arrogance that because they were wealthy, that they were godly. <laughs> Wealth, wealth, uh, uh, external wealth is not a spiritual condition. Mm. 
But if you could not be rich and be in heaven, then you couldn't be, you couldn't be Philemon, you couldn't be Abraham, you couldn't be David, you couldn't be Solomon. You couldn't even be uh, John of Ar uh, Arimathea, who, who, because he was wealthy, had in reserve uh, 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 the tomb prepared for the burial of Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, come on. But the Bible makes it clear to where we don't even have to play these uh, 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 games with our own understanding, leaning on our own understanding. Those who trust in riches, those who trust in, who make riches their arm, make riches their, 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 their trust or their armory or their foundation or who make riches their, 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 their strength. You won't be able to enter into the kingdom because to enter into the kingdom, God must be your strength always. But money can be your tool. <laughs> oh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, the where, where do we conflate these, these, these texts? Why, why it's, and that's what happens to where people who have been influenced by devils or demons or wolves, they can't even see the text straight, right? You hear people quote this verse all the time. They say, listen, money is the root of all evil. You ever hear that? Money is the root of all evil, right? Has anybody ever heard it quoted like that? Money is the root of all evil. Anybody ever heard it quoted like that? Have you? Anybody? I have all the time. Memes. People post. Money is the root of all evil. I said, no, it ain't. <laughs> money is money is a, 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 is a method or a medium of exchange. My love, how I feel about it is what roots me, right? It's what roots me, that roots me and connects me to something or, 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 or connects me to something other than God in a way in which I would trust. The love of money is the root of all evil. It's the beginning of the downfall, how I feel about it. Once I make it my master, once I, once I make it my master, what I say is I'll do anything for it. Come on. But, 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 but over here we say we'll do anything for Christ. Come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm not, um, okay. I won't even go there. I want to go there. I want to go down. You know, I've had people say, brother Eli, you know, why did you never ask for money? You never asked for money. I said, because you know what? The Lord said he would provide. I put the link up because people ask me, I'll say, hey, you know, brother, Eli, you got a link. Where can I so, right? You know, when they do, right? So I just put the link up. They said, why don't you ever ask for money like other people? I said, because what people give is between them and the Lord. But then when people see somebody give, you know, I had one lady call and say, um, one lady write and say, uh, uh, in the comments, she was like, well, you up there begging for money all the time. I said, I said, first of all, the devil is a lie. Cause when you've never, how many years have I been on here? Has anybody ever heard me beg for money? It's never happened. It's never happened. Right? Because that's between, you know, that's that's the work between you and God. When God moves on your heart, you will, right? You <laughs> you respond or you don't. That's that's between, but that that's something you work out because I gotta work that out. When God puts it on our heart to give, then we we work that out. Huh? And I don't write, you know, then I and, and me and my wife, we go work that out between us and God. And it's our right, and you may not see what we you may not see what we give secretly, but God, watch this, God may show you the outcome openly because we are faithful and we try to make it so he don't he don't have to tell us twice but people get in their head right like that's never happened but i said but i said to myself how would you allow that to how would you twist that like that <laughs> how would you twist that like that as if that happened when it didn't happen you see you see the perception 
It's dangerous. It's dangerous to allow your mind to operate on this plateau, to operate in this perception and to validate it. You gotta, you gotta say that's not right. You gotta call that out. You gotta say no, that was wrong. You gotta be able to look at that and say no, that's not right, or else, or else you make no room for wisdom. Is what I'm saying. When I look at that script, scripture, and I see, and it clearly says that the love of money is the root of all evil. If I say that money is the root of all evil, I have just entangled myself in a snare or in a lie or somebody else now somebody now somebody don't even know how to approach god because now you've just conditioned somebody to go to god being double-minded lord and they really and they legitimately need their provisions but guess what you just told them money was the root of all evil so they don't even know how to pray confidently for the things that they need petitioning god for for watch this uh, petitioning god just for their necessities lord i i i, I lord i I, I need to pay you. I need to pay some rent, right? They don't, they don't even have it in a capacity to be landowners so that they can, uh, 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 right? Landowners build houses, right? For the less fortunate. They, they, there's no way they can accept that from God that you, you've just removed them so far away from even being able to do something that would glorify God on a greater level. They are just barely struggling to even say, Lord, can you help me with, can you help me with me? Now their life has become about them only and not about what, what's watch this because the Bible also told us what to give to the poor with what, what you want me to give to the poor? You want me to give some evil to the poor? How am I going to feed the poor? How am I going to give to the poor? How am I going to give to him that asked me? What am I going to give him? So God, so God wants you to be walking around giving people evil stuff? Come on, make it make sense. Lending what? Come on, tell him. Tell him, Miss Williams. Lending what? You think God is going around giving people evil? Give to those who ask. Ask not, and ask not, and ask, ask it not in, uh, uh, and ask for it not back. Right? You got the poor. He said the poor is always with you. Feed them. With what, Jesus? That evil money. <laughs> now all we got to do, all we got to give one another is. Oh, the be, be clothed and be warmed in the name of Jesus, right? Let me just prophesy food in your belly in the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> I just prophesy a full stomach over you in Jesus name, right? Not that it can't happen, right? Not that he won't do it, right? Go and be full in Jesus name, right? Not that, right? Not that, it, right? Not that he can't do it if that's what he led you to do, because if the Lord, if the Holy Spirit stirred you and led you to do it, then that'd be all right. That'd be sufficient. But look at that. You see the confusion? Right? You see the confusion in that? No, the Bible clearly says those who, even the disciples, when Jesus told them, he said, how hard is it for a man who's right for a man who is, and this is why I love the Lord. This is why I love the Lord. The Lord is so awesome. And when you start to really discuss, to, to learn of him, right, you find, you, you begin to discover his ways, right? The Lord said, how hardly is it for a man to enter, uh, a rich man to enter into the kingdom? Why did he say that? Why didn't he just say, how hard is it for a man to, who trusts? Because he wanted the disciples to ask questions. Lord, what does that, are you paying attention? He said, listen, I'm here to teach and I'm, I'm bringing understanding. And sometimes the way you check to see who's listening is if you say something that they, that they have, the, that they will say, hold on, wait a second. Hold on, Lord. That ain't hidden right. Because his disciples did. They didn't. I, I love what I love about the disciples. They didn't have to pretend to be more Christian. They didn't have to pretend to be what they were like we do now. So they could tell the Lord, Lord, what? They could ask the Lord who's sitting on your, they would just ask the Lord, this, uh, they would just ask you all kind of questions that we'd be like, hold on, why are you asking Jesus that don't, that don't, right? <laughs> right? Don't you have any, <laughs> but they would ask him just some wild stuff. But when he told them how hard is it for a rich man to enter into the kingdom, they was like, what? First thing they said was what? Well, then who can be saved? What does that, what does that tell you? They's like, hold on, a rich man can't get into heaven. Then who going to be saved? 
Who can be saved? And how can anybody, who can be saved? You know, they said that, right? They weren't like, yeah, well, we're all poor anyway. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's good, Jesus. It's like, it's like we businessmen. I'm a, I'm a fisherman by trade. Some tax collectors, right? You know, <laughs> you know, exactly, exactly. Lord, they had money. So it seemed like Jesus was excluding them. And I tell people all the time when you listen, you, you, you better stick around for the revelation. Hear the statement, but stick around for the revelation because Jesus is searching for people who will, who watches, who will dig deeper. Lord, what are you saying? This is what I see, Jesus. What do you mean by that? You know, my wife, <laughs> let me tell you something about my wife. The Lord would tell my wife something and she, she will not move, right? <laughs> she, she will, he will tell her something. She was like, hmm. Said, baby, you know what the Lord just said? You know what the Lord showed me? I was like, oh, all right. Then sometimes I'll share, and sometimes he wants me to allow her to pursue him for the answer. And so sometimes he'll seal it off. And I was like, yeah, baby, just pray about it. And she'll be just, but do you know she won't move a muscle? She will sit on a word for a month, two months, right? It's where she's been sitting on, right? <laughs> right? Some have already started to come to pass. Some have already started right, to, to happen in it, you know. But she will sit on that word until she get the revelation. Wow. And I just want to say this to you, baby. You know, I want to say this because, you know, when you, when you have this kind of uh, integrity, what it says is, is that, listen, your priorities are right. And this is coming into a time where I'm just going to declare openly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, where God is elevating you. He's going to elevate you even more. Because you demonstrate what your priority is. Lord, I want to be right before you. And I want to say what is right for you. You know, some people hear. Some people see and they go off and speak based up right and they go off and speak and it's all wrong, right? Right? It started spiritual, but it's but it's coming out carnal. Like, nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't the revelation, right? <laughs> no, nah, that ain't it. And so that's where people like, oh, the Lord said, you know, the Lord said the Bible says that, you know, how hard can is it for a rich man to get into the kingdom? Right? And, they, and I was like, but that ain't the revelation. That was the statement of engagement. That was the statement that Christ used to cause his disciples to, to inquire, to dig deeper, to go deeper so he can open up deeper because then he was able to tell them how hardly it is for them who trust in riches to enter in. He made them chase understanding. He made them, see, he salted them, made them thirsty, made them chase the revelation so that they could handle, so that made them chase understanding so that they can watch this, be receptive to the revelation. But that's why some people, when you give them the revelation, when they already got their mind made up, they are rejected. That's where you get the dogs. That's where you get the pigs, right? You start trying to give them right stuff that they got their minds already made up. And you're like, hold on, that's not even, now, now, now. You would rather, now you would rather be rebellious. Now you would rather be rebellious than say, no, that is what the word of God says. No, that is the scripture. Where's the controversy? You see? No. Well, this is just what I think. Well, hold on. Now we're talking about, see, that's why you see the difference, how people prioritize what they think than what the word of God actually says. And that's why we, that's why so many people are left without the discovering the life. There's life in there. Life and life and, and that much more abundantly. Christ said, Christ said, Christ said himself. He said, listen, only the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He said, but I came that you may have life in that much more abundantly. Let's read. And so I was talking about the brokenness and how we come up in this broken. And I was like, I was feeling kind of sad. I was like, man, Lord, I was like, man, it's like, man, you know, you gather us from these low places, you know, so many of us from these broken places, uh, uh, so many of us. And, and it's like, we don't really stand a chance because we didn't, we weren't grown and we weren't raised in, in, in places that brought this kind of structure. And so our hopes are dashed our, or uh, our perceptions are polluted. You know, we have so much, uh, 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 um, 
uh, of a broken understanding between what's possible, what you're willing to do. We don't know how to get there. We don't even know how to make sometimes decisions. King, we don't know how to make decisions uh, that are that are right for us today because we're not accustomed to making the sacrifice. Because making right decisions today often requires making a sacrifice today. Be willing, being willing to sow that seed today that will bring a harvest tomorrow. Being good to somebody today, come on somebody, that God will turn into your blessing tomorrow. Being honoring God and being faithful to God today that will open up and bring your blessing tomorrow. We don't, we, we don't often know these things. And I was like, Lord, man, you know, we come with a lot of, we come with a lot of issues, man. Well, you know, man, you know, and it can be hard for us to find clarity in the word of God, clarity in terms of God's position, our, our you know, our birthright in Christ and, 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 and just ways that ways that uh, bring us forward and, and lead us into good places. Right. It can be hard for us to discover that. Now, I want to read something to you. Right. And the Lord said this to me. He said, that's why I sent my son. I sent my son to do right in every way that you were unable to. He said, I sent my son to qualify you for the blessing. Watch this, that you didn't know how to acquire. And all I ask you to do is get out of your own way. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, I sent my son to qualify to, to qualify you for the blessing. I sent my son to become the curse. I sent my son to become the curse, to put on the sin, to put on all your disqualifications, all your failures, where you come from, what you deserve. So that through him, by him, you may be blessed. And he said, you know what? All, I, all that's required of you is for you to get out of the way. Get your head out of the way. Get your mind out of the way. Get your thoughts out of the way. Let God be true and every man a liar. Huh? Get your perception out of the way. Uh-huh. Uh, get uh, Well, this is what I believe. No one cares, right? No one cares. If it ain't bringing forth life and that much more abundant, I don't care what you think. Oh, come on, somebody. Is it just me? If, if, if your thoughts and your perception is not bringing forth life and that much more abundant, then who cares? Why do you, why does anybody even really need to listen? Why does, why did, why you feel like somebody need to listen? Oh, come on. If they can't touch Christ with what you're saying. People automatically think that somebody should value what they got to say. I don't care what you got to say. If I can't see Christ, I want to see the one who makes whole. Oh boy. You know, and, and the church right now is prophetically speaking in a lot of ways, they are the church that throngs Christ. And, and, and watch this. You ready for this major revelation? Thank you. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just said to me, they are the church in this generation. So many of the church are the ones that throng Christ. And it looks so appropriate to the disciples that when Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples like everybody touching. You say, nah, no, nah, no, nah, they no, nah, everybody's not touching me. Uh-oh. Because not everybody is touching Christ like he wants to be touched. Uh-oh. Ah. Uh, you see, because in an assembly where it seems like a lot is happening, but nothing is happening. There was one woman who said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. Uh, my situation's going to change. Watch this. This infirmity is going to dry up if I can just touch the hem. And so he said, he turned around and asked another blanking statement. He said, who touched me? And they were like, Jesus, it seemed like that don't make no sense. Everybody touched me. He said, no, nah, no, nah. somebody touched me, touch me. See, right now in the church, the, only the enemy wants you to come away with nothing. He wants you to be like everybody else, throng in Christ, or caught up in the crowd, throng in Christ, and just touching, everybody just touching, everybody just touching, but not touching Christ in the way that he was sent to be touched. He came to take away the sins. He came to, he came to set free the, the, uh, the captives. He came to bind up the brokenhearted. He came to set at liberty those who are bound. He came to, he came to be touched in a special way. 
And everybody over here thinking and right in the church, and there's some deacons, there's some apostles who think that, well, you know, this must be how it's supposed to be, that everybody's touching Jesus and nothing happening. Everybody touching and nothing happening. Everybody touching and nothing happening. And Jesus tolerated it. Jesus tolerated it until the one came and touched him, and he said, is there anybody here that I can make a spectacle over who going to touch me the right way? Who going to touch me the right way? She came and she said, I'm going to be made whole today. Now, I'm, go I'm going to be made whole today. And he said, he said, stop the presses. Who, who did it? And he said, oh, daughter. And he made a spectacle. He isolated her in the midst of everybody else who was doing nothing. Making a lot of noise, making a lot of noise, making a lot of show that they got to touch Jesus. And, and, and all of it was for nothing. All of it for nothing. All this action, all this activity, and nothing happening. Jesus did not come for nothing to happen. He came for something to happen. And this is what your life should be like. This is why I preach the way I do, because Jesus wants to show up and make something happen in your life. He is not satisfied with you just oh, making a bunch of noise and oh, you're doing all this stuff and nothing is happening. He came to make things happen. There's a reason the oil flows. And he turned around and he said, listen, daughter. She was scared. She's like, oh, I just stole from Jesus. She said, I just took this blessing. I don't even know how he feel about that. Think about that. She said, uh oh, she was scared. She's like, oh man, uh oh, I didn't even ask him. I didn't fast. I ain't even, I ain't even say, excuse me, Jesus, if it's all right with you. She said, I just came and took that blessing. But then she started feeling bad about it. You notice that, right? And so she started to shrink back. And Jesus, was like, who touched me? He said, nah, 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 somebody touched me. I felt that virtue go. I, I felt that power. I felt somebody make a, a draw on the power. And when he turned around and found her, she was just crouched in, in, the, in like she didn't know what to expect from God. Almost as if by the time she got healed, isn't it amazing how her desperation clouded what would seem like her natural common sense. But yet Jesus prayed or praised her for that her desperation caused her to make a move on God. Watch this that God had been waiting for. The same way the four lepers, their desperation caused them to override what seemed like logic and common sense. All that stuff that gets in our way to put, to put a move on, watch this, to put an expectation on God to, see, to, to, to bring deliverance to an, entire, to an entire people. And Jesus said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. And what he told her, go in to peace he's like you know you all right you didn't do nothing wrong be at peace go into peace also the healing also you right you know be at peace now watch this and so that's what he said he said son you know i was like lord we got so many shortcomings basically that that affect our ability to to, to kind of walk and and um you know, kind of walk in the blessing, right, Lord, or, or to try to, you know, or, or, or to uh, not to complicate the blessings arrival, right? We, we, we have perceptions, we have ways, you know, some of them are not good, right? You know, we have all these different things, these areas of brokenness, Lord, that affect our ability to, to receive the blessing, to walk in it, Lord, you know? And then he talked about Jesus and he said, my son made all that right for you, right? But I want to show you something. Deuteronomy 28, 28 says this, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently, di diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe, to do all his commandments, which he command thee this day, that the Lord God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. Some of you here, God wants to give a platform. He wants to give a place. He wants to put you in a position. Come on, somebody. Isn't that amazing? He said, I will set you on high above all nations. And the word nations, where you get the word Gentiles or Goyim, right? Or Goyi, right? It's where they get, you know, it becomes a slur, right? You know, um, the unbelievers basically saying that God will create a distinction out of you. 
and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. And this is the a blessing that we have. This is the amazing thing that we have is Christ said, I do always what pleases my father. I do, I listen, I, I, I fulfilled the obedience that opened up the blessing for you to be blessed in me. And this is why it's so important to make Christ your habitation. And the Lord said this, he said, you're not supposed to be chasing the blessing. The blessing is supposed to be chasing you. You're not supposed to be running after the blessing. When you chase the blessing, it's hard to find. The Bible says, Matthew, uh, Matthew six, seek, seek, uh, Matthew six, seek, for, seek first the kingdom, right? And his righteousness, right? And all these things will be added unto you, which means they're going what they're going to do to me 28 you. Seeking first the kingdom is really about finding your place. I am blessed with the Lord. I am blessed. I am blessed. Reconciling this in your, in your heart and your mind so that you don't find yourself being stirred to pursue it, but you position yourself to receive and embrace it, to allow it to come in because it's God's will, to allow it to come into your life because it's God's will, it's God's word, it's, God, it's, it's God's portion. It's okay to go forward. It's okay to be, it's okay to be blessed. And what does that mean? Right. And, and sometimes that, and, and obviously being blessed is a derogatory term. Isn't it amazing how in some parts of the church being blessed is a derogatory term? How think about the, look, look at the absurdity, which you can tell people are not rightly dividing the word. They're not rightly dividing the word. And, it, and, and if it's not, and if it, <laughs> If you say being blessed is bad, but yet God said you are blessed with all with that you are blessed in his son Christ, then you don't see the problem here. And there are some people who will hold on to what they believe over what the word says. And there are others who will follow them. Right. Instead of submitting themselves to the word. I'm not one of them. Because our job is to be able to see clearly what is God saying? If you say blessings bad, God says blessings good, then who should I believe? Now watch this. Now watch this. Somebody listening right now, you've come across this word. I don't know by, I don't know. Listen, somebody listening, somebody who will be listening to this word. You thought that being blessed was bad, right? You took that. You really believed that. And look at the consequences had on your life. You got to understand deception, partial truths, <laughs> partial, partial truths, uh, and, 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 and things of that nature will never reveal a lot of God hung up on a perception, what you think, you know, you can always look and see how much uh, how much God is your life is re revealing. And, and, and it's interesting because, you know, it don't mean that you're going to have a bunch of stuff. But I remember how. When I had my encounter with the Lord, how um, I looked at my life and I saw a lot of God. And I remember being. Um. I remember us not having a lot, but having a lot of love, having a lot of joy, right? You know, having that, that, that closeness of family, you know, um, having that contentment, right? I grew up and one of the greatest things, uh, my mom gave us was that ability to, uh, understand so much what, uh, of, of what was really important 
even though we didn't have a lot, right? And, you know, there were times when you go to people who, who had more, right? And you'd be like, man, you know, you'd be upset with what you didn't have because when, especially when your hum stomach get to growling, but, you know, you know, God would always make a way. And, and some of the challenges that we had to go through because of, uh, of things, you know, but I look back, I was like, man, it was awesome because I saw a lot of God there. You know, when you, when you don't know how to look at your life and all you can see is the difficulties, the, the, the problems and the things that happen to you, you will always need other things to make life better. But if you can ever find God, uh, the goodness of God, how he would show up, how my mom would send us to the store with notes and, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the people at the store, right. You know, um, I think they were from, um, Abo G and mama son, right. She would send us to the store. You know, they were of, 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 of Asian, Asian descent with a note, right? And then they would come from behind a counter with some bags and just start filling food up. And they said, okay, you take to your mama. <laughs> Tell her to pay me on, uh, right, on the first. <laughs> and then we walked back, you know, I saw God there. Some people are, some people are just stuck on the fact that they had, that they were hungry. And they forget to and they forget to praise God for how they got fed. And I saw the goodness of God show up over and over again in my life. And I and this is why I don't care what nobody say. You can't tell me that God is not good. Because God was good to me. You can't tell me that God is not faithful because God was faithful to me. You can't tell me that God don't bless. Because he carved out a purpose for my life that went beyond the grave or prison. My life is an open rebuke to every Bible chopping, non-discerning, non-spirit having, full of doctrines, but no white, full of uh, uh, office, full of degrees, but no discernment, no Holy Spirit guidance. The my my life testifies that God is absolutely good. God got a plan for your life. God is absolutely faithful, and it is, it is, it is an open rebuke to your perception, to your man-made perception. And guess what? I've come to bear witness to a whole lot of God that may your life be filled with a whole lot of God that your life will take the limitations off God and that God will just explode in your life and that the blessings of the Lord will come upon you and overtake you and that every lie that has been choking your life out every misunderstanding that has been living your limiting your life limiting God in your life will be overturned in Jesus name it will be destroyed in Jesus name every yoke of bondage will be broken in Jesus name and the glory of God will reign true and rise in your life in Jesus name because you're not supposed to be chasing the blessing the blessing is supposed to be chasing you amen it's supposed to be chased that's the right that's the right way amen father in Jesus name Lord I thank you Lord right now I call on your Holy Spirit father to just go and begin to heal father all the areas all the places of misunderstanding father remove bad doctrine father and open up our eyes to clarity father by your Holy Spirit father Heal those, Father, who have struggled, Father, with, with the notion, Lord, that it was all right, Father, to be blessed by you. That you were good enough, Father, to, to take care of. That you were good enough to provide because you said you would. But it's also your heart, Father. Open up their eyes that they may see you clearly, Father. That, and that that poor doctrine, Father, would be removed, Father. That we will keep you in our focus and in our scope and in our eyes always, Lord, as the source, as what we trust in, because we trust in you because you are good and you are faithful. 
You're, you're immovable in your ways. Release the blessing, Father. Or thank you, Holy Spirit. Allow the blessing to find all those, Father, who have been in need of your goodness, Father, in Jesus' name. That even in this time, Father, that nothing can stop the blessing, Father, that you send forth, Father, in Jesus' name. That our failures, our shortcomings, Father, and even the difficulties and the, the challenges that we learned in life, Father, will not be an ender, a hindrance, Father, to the blessing, Father, that you are unleashing, Father. May it locate each and every one of your people today, Father, in Jesus' name. Even those, Father, who didn't even know that they could be blessed. I come to prophesy to you today in Jesus' name that you can. Christ has made it possible for you to be blessed. Why? Because Christ, Christ became the curse to open up the blessing for you. And so every lie, every person who said you couldn't be blessed, you didn't deserve it, I break that, I break that hold off of you in Jesus' name. I break that ceiling wide open in Jesus' name. You don't have to chase it. It's supposed to be chasing you. That's my word for you guys this evening. Until next time, family, God bless you all. We love you all. Talk to you soon.